So you just bought an airbrush. You just brought it home. You just opened the box. You just hooked it up to the compressor. And now you just want to paint something, right? But you're not really sure what to do with it because you've never had an airbrush before. You've seen videos of people spraying with airbrushes and it all looks so easy. Um, and it is, I'm not gonna say it isn't. As long as you know the basics, right? There's some basics you need to learn first before you're ever gonna feel comfortable with an airbrush. And I think a lot of people just jump into airbrushing and they think, as soon as I get this thing in my hand, I'm gonna be able to do anything any of these other guys do. And I would challenge you to think about that really hard because ultimately, um, you know, Richard Gray is a famous miniature painter and he uses a brush and the same paints I do, but that doesn't mean I may ever hit his level <laughs> of quality in my entire life, right? So it's not all just about the equipment, you know, I could use a, the artist opus brush just like he does, but it doesn't mean I'm going to have the same results he does. Ultimately, you need to be able to control the airbrush, not let it control you. Um, so what I want to show you is when you get your airbrush home and you take it out of the package and you decide you're ready to paint something, do not, I repeat, do not pick up a miniature and think, let's just get rolling. It's not that easy. You need to understand what is going on with this airbrush. So let's just do a little airbrush 101 type talking here. An airbrush is nothing more than a way to um, apply paint to something, anything. That's all it is. It is not like a spray can, like a rattle can of Citadel primer. It's not the same. It's not going to work the same. It's very different. An airbrush is a precision instrument, believe it or not. Um, and what's precise about it is the way the air travels through the airbrush, the way the paint travels through the airbrush, and the magic that happens right here at the nose, where it mixes paint and air to spray onto any surface for any reason, <laughs> not just for miniatures. Um, so what most people don't think about is how this needle works. This needle, um, is the body of this airbrush is machined for the exact um, this size of this needle in the nozzle down here where the tip is. So if you ever change your needle, people say, well, you need a 0.4, you need a 0.2, you need, I'm using a 0.5 and I can't spray fine lines and all that stuff, right? So we'll talk about that in another video, but it's very precise right here where the nozzle is because it has a taper to it and the needle's tapered on the end. Let me show you. Oh, my needle is dirty. So you can see the end of this needle. It's tapered, right? It gets smaller as it goes down. Tapered. And inside of the airbrush right here at the very end, there's a nozzle, nozzle, which is that very end little piece right there. And it's also tapered. It's tapered at exactly the same taper as this needle. So when you push this needle through the end of that nozzle, they make a sealed fit. They fit perfectly together and nothing can get by them. Nothing. So, put this nozzle back on. So that's the precision of it. If that's not very precise, your paint's not going to flow precisely. When you put your needle in, I'm putting the needle back in here. I'm going to push it all the way down until I get to the end, until it stops. I'm going to be very light, though. It's stopping right there, right there. But I'm barely pushing, so I'm just going to twist it a little bit with just a tiny bit of pressure, make sure it seals good, and then tighten this, this nut right here to hold the needle in place, right? So if you push too hard right there, by the way, that nozzle gets very thin at the end and you can actually cause it to split because you've pushed it too hard at the end and then it, it messes it up. It won't work right after that. You need a new nozzle. So it's very simple. Uh, that keeps the paint from just dripping out when you don't press, when you don't pull the trigger back. When you pull the trigger back, you, you pull the needle out of that tapered fitting, right? And it allows paint to go around the needle into the airstream, which is also in here too. 
Airstream comes up from your air hose, travels through an outside body attachment right there. I mean, you can't take it off, but it's, it's, it's obviously not part of this barrel cylinder. Goes in through here, and it goes unmixed with the paint all the way up to here. Okay, so when I pull this back, you can see the needle moves. All right, that should be very smooth, and the action of pressing this trigger down should be very smooth. If any of that drags or sticks or does anything anywhere, you need to clean the airbrush or there's something wrong with it internally. Something got bent, scraped, broken, uh, something. Something's not right inside. Your needle's bent, something. Um, so if you have any issues with any of that and it's not smooth, that's a big key, a big sign that you have a problem and you need to take the whole thing apart and look at it. And in fact, that's the first thing I would tell you to do when you open the box of your airbrush. Don't get out paint, don't connect it to a compressor, don't do anything but completely disassemble this airbrush. It'll come with instructions on what all the pieces are and how to put it together. Take the entire thing apart and look at every piece of it and just figure out in your mind exactly what's happening when you do this, when you do this, when I let air into here, where does the air go, find all the air passages inside, look at it very closely because it will help you when you need to troubleshoot any issues you might be having with paint. Number one thing. Number two thing is um, do not use it on a model. This airbrush is significant, any airbrush, because when you paint with it, you don't touch anything. It, you don't touch it to the surface of anything. You actually hold it away from the surface. So you have to be able to aim this thing correctly. Otherwise, you have a very tiny model you're trying to paint, and you're trying to aim at it with this airbrush. And you really, until you hold one, you don't realize it, but you have no idea where that spray is going to hit on your model. Just by holding it up there, you're like, oh, I have no idea where the spray is going to go. I think it's going to go right here. So you need to really practice um, with a grid like this. It's very simple. You just take a grid like this. I just took a pen and a piece of copy paper and uh, an envelope I had because it was straight and I just drew this grid really fast. You don't have to buy fancy paper. You don't have to do anything. Just use what you have laying around. And then get some paint. Let me just take my cap off here. Pop the cap off so I can put the paint in. And uh, put some paint on my brush right here. This is actually acrylic ink. It's just a little easier to deal with having to break out paint. Put the lid back on this. I don't want it spilling everywhere. And then and put the cap on because you don't want to. You, you got to get used to the feel of this thing, right? It goes in your hand, usually fits right there in your hand. And then you just kind of put your finger here. Some people hold it like this. Some people hold it like this. Some people, there's all different ways to hold it. I hold mine like this. Okay. And then practice with the trigger. Get a feel for it. Pull, push the trigger down and pull back on the trigger a little bit and you'll see paint starts to come out, right? Boom, there you go. And get used to this action right here that I'm doing. I'm pulling the trigger back just enough to get paint and then I'm rocking it back forward, but I'm keeping the air on. Because if I don't keep this air going, it can't keep cleaning this needle. Paint will build up on your needle if you don't keep the, this trigger down. So you push the trigger down, pull back to get paint, push it forward, let it spray a little bit. That's just air coming out now, then let go. Do not pull it back and then just let go all at once like that. That causes paint, to, it keeps running down your needle because you had the trigger back and then there's no air. So it just builds up right there, and then that'll dry on your needle because it's just laying there at the end. It also does something horrible in the fact that when you have a big blob of paint here, at the nozzle on the needle right there, because you didn't keep the air down, the next time you go back to paint and you push this down, it spits out this glob of paint that was there. Um, and if you're pointing it at your model, you're going to have a mess. It's not going to look nice. So... Always spray away from your model to start. Do a couple little sprays like this to get air through it. Then go to your model and then start spraying. So what I want to show you, one of the best things you can do is to try to hit the center of these squares. That's it. Just go into the airbrush, get up close, maybe two inches away, point it where you want the spray to go, where you think it's going to be, and then rock the trigger back and forth a little bit. This teaches you where your spray is going to go. Right? It's pretty simple. 
because you're going to want to spray small on a miniature. You want to airbrush really as much as you can before you start picking up your regular brush because it'll give you this really smooth gradient and you don't have to worry about glazing and all these other things until the very end and then you can do all of your edges and your spotlights and or, um, specular highlights or things like that that'll be a little more um, solid than an airbrush would be on a transition. It's more of a hard edge. Um, you can't do that with an airbrush. So you have to do it with a regular brush. So what I try to do is I primer, I zenithal highlight, I do a base coat first, first highlight, and then I switch to brushes and do it the rest with a brush. But this is the best drill you can do when you first get your airbrush. Is just start hitting these spots. Can I hit the center of these squares? Because that's going to teach you how to hold your airbrush when you're about to paint your miniature. This sink's just a little bit thick. You can also practice how close you need to be. I can get really close, make a dot, and it's going to come out like super precise. See, it almost has a hard edge to it. Or if I'm way back, you know, now I'm about four inches away from the paper. When I do it, I'm going to get a big, right? And I'm using, I'm pulling the needle back the same distance. The trigger. I'm doing the same motion, but when I'm closer, I make a more concentrated dot. And when I'm further away, I make a looser, smoother dot, right? And you think about that based on what you're trying to do on the surface you're painting. Do you want it to be a hard edge like that and I got to get close? Or do I want a real smooth shadow like that, or highlight for that matter? Then I need to be back a little further. And then the amount I pull back the trigger allows a certain amount of paint to come through, right? See, I'm trying to do more, but I'm too close. So I'm getting this spider effect, and that's bad. You don't want that. So by practicing this, you're teaching yourself how, where I need this trigger to be, what I need to do, and how will I know I've gone too far? And that's why I recommend using a piece of paper too, because uh, when I first started airbrushing over 30 years ago, I started by airbrushing t-shirts. T-shirts are like a sponge when you airbrush on them. They soak up everything. So you can blast paint into them as hard as you want, and you'll never get the spider effect where they run, basically. So I did airbrush airbrushing t-shirts for a while and then I switched over to airbrushing uh, like scale models and stuff and it was a disaster because I wasn't used to having to control the airbrush so much um, but on scale models and miniatures you have to be pretty precise with stuff and I can make this I can make this dot like tiny like teeny teeny tiny I can make an itty bitty little dot with this and that's not because of the size of my needle <laughs> it's not it's because I'm controlling the distance and the pressure and the amount of paint that I'm putting to this paper. That's it. The needle size doesn't matter. You know when the needle size matters? When you hold it wide open like this. That's when it matters. A bigger needle will allow you to spray bigger pattern at full trigger back, trigger lock, all the way back here. But when you're spraying details, any size needle can be controlled to give you the same size hairline dot. That, that doesn't, think about it. The needle doesn't matter. If the distance and the amount of paint you're putting out creates the dot, not the needle. The needle's just what the paint rolls down. And the, if you have a bigger cavity because your needle has a larger diameter and you pull the needle all the way back, then you're allowing more paint into that area where it does the atomization. It only affects full needle back. That's it. So when people say, oh, you need, you need a smaller needle because you're spraying smaller stuff. It's not true. You need to learn airbrush control. And that's what this exercise will do for you. Once you get used to this and you're feeling pretty confident about where your dots are laying and how you're spraying and how your paint's mixed and you can do pretty clean dots, then pick up a model. Start here first. This is what's important. Learn your tool. Learn it first. Learn how to control it. And then you won't be disappointed with it. You, you won't mess up a model immediately every time. You won't have this horrible tip dry because you don't have control of the trigger. That is my biggest advice to anyone who's new to airbrushing.